my god, this is the house, man. Oh my god, the memories. They didn't have a <laughs> television to watch. So she would come to our house to watch one. They used to sneak to their room to watch TV. Now they are watching you on their TV. <laughs> this is Miss Trudy. She is currently trailblazing YouTube in Africa with over 300,000 subscribers on her main channel and one of the most engaged fan bases in Africa. But it didn't exactly begin like this because behind all the glory was sadness, determination, and a dream. From growing up in Nairobi, Kenya with her single dad. Was it not for my dad? I really don't know where we would be. Dropping out of university after two years and working in retail supermarkets to starting a YouTube channel from her bedroom using only a phone, she somehow got into. Oh! Hi! My name is Raymond Kahuma. I'm a YouTuber from Uganda, and this is a new series where Wodemaya, myself, and so many African creators are gonna collaborate to bring you guys even better African stories than we can individually. And we really hope you like them. For example, how using only a phone, Miss Trudy somehow got into the point of traveling the world, buying property, and giving back to the people in her life. I paid Miss Trudy a visit to find out exactly how she got here. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Thank my apartment here in Kilimani. Thank you for having us. Can I just start by saying that we're all just very inspired by your work? Honestly, uh, the me four years ago wouldn't even believe this is possible. Most people thought I was crazy doing what I was doing. I also thought I was crazy. I, I was like, what am I doing with my life, you know? But sometimes you shouldn't despise the days of small beginnings because sometimes they lead to great destinations. And I'm not there yet, but I'm heading there. And I'm grateful for this step. It's, it's, I'm just so happy, you know? Wow. Could you just please show us around? Okay, so this is the sitting room. Um, come with me, let me show you the bedroom. This is a bedroom. A bed fit for a queen. You know, I used to sleep in a really bad bed for the longest time. And my brother used to tell me, you need to buy a better bed. And I was like, oh, I'm saving for a house. So I sacrificed a lot. So when, when I bought the house, I was like, I'm gonna get myself a really comfortable bed. And now when I sleep here, I don't wanna get up because it's so comfortable. How do you keep motivated? And how did you even stay motivated when you were in a more difficult situation? Um, number one, it's God. As in, I pray to God to help me be the truest and highest version of myself. I just feel like there's greatness inside me and it wants to come out. I can't say exactly what it is, how, how I'm gonna do that, but it, it wants to come out and it's gonna come out. Seeing Trudy talk with such passion just made me feel like, was she always like this? What was work like? What did she even do? I did promotions for like three years. It was all over the place. Um, Ngong Road, Kasarani, CBD. How much were you paid? 300 Kenyan shillings. In a day or in a month? In a day. 300 Kenyan shillings? Yes. It's actually crazy on this lane because I used to market Omo in sunlight. You used to do this every day. You enter the supermarket like at 7 and, and you leave at 7 at night and you're given a 30 minutes break. You're not supposed to lean. Don't get tired because you're not allowed to lean. I did this for three years. It got to a point where my legs started swelling up because of standing every day from morning to evening. You know, they started swelling. I started feeling pain. It got to a point where my dad was telling me, you know what, you don't have to do it. Just stay home. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. What's your name? Dorcas Akoyo. Dorcas, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too in person. Yeah, nice I used to, to do your job. Uh -huh. this, I used to do your job. This is why it's so exciting to talk to you. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's a good thing actually. I know, right? I know. So that means uh, in the next few years I can also be somewhere like you, eh? Yes, it's so possible. <laughs> and I just want to encourage everyone that, you know, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, yours are different, but for me when I was doing promotions, it was so hard. I used to stand from morning till evening. It is, it is, it it's is. hard, right? Yeah, it is. It got to it's a point my legs started aching. <laughs> I tell you my back right now. Oh, back aches. <laughs> Don't even get us to the back aches because you stand so long. No. Is this something that you really wanted to do? Yeah, actually I want to own my own spa and I also want to be a vlogger someday just that I don't have uh, enough content to do. But I'm sure one day one time we'll be in this together. Amen. It's possible. <laughs> no, no, no. I did not quit. I was fired. You're fired. At a time when I thought I was going to get promoted, I was fired by someone because of my tribe. Yes, I was working in the supermarket. The manager came and asked me, what tribe are you? He came and asked me my names. I said my name. He told me the other name. I said, why? He insisted. Tell me the other name. Where are you from? I told him, my dad is Luo. My mom is Kikuyu. And then he told me, what, what's your name? Then I said my name, Gachud Awino Juma. The next day I was fired. Wow. Yes, because of my name. And some people are so tribalistic in Kenya. What happened so after, after you three got years, fired? you decided to quit? Working in the supermarket? I went home, you know, and I was home for three months. I didn't know where my life was going to go. I was so confused and I used to ask God, why? Like, why did you let this happen to me, you know? So this is where I used to live. Um, on this block, the last house the f on the first floor brings back 
so many memories you know all my childhood born and raised my god this is the house man oh my god the memories Oof. babe all these people are friends all these kids here and you this is where i told you we used to play we used to play a game called Kati, where you're, you're running. So there's three people, two at the ends and someone running in the middle. And then another game we used to play is we ring someone's bell, then you run and hide. They come, they look, they don't see anyone. Then when they close the door, you run again and ring it. It used to be so much fun. Come, 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 come. Uh, do you want to walk camera? I told you to capture her face. Oh my God. <laughs> She wants to cry. Look at her eyes. Don't cry. If you cry, I'm also gonna cry. <laughs> so he was a baby, ah. and then he only used to put his finger in his mouth like this. Senior player. Like he was a kid when we were growing up. So now he's really grown in the university. Man, it's crazy. Like he's really grown, this. So the whole story of Trudy, uh -huh. we know it better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> then tell us. Tell us then. How do you tell us? What, what do you remember about her childhood? They didn't usually have a TV. <laughs> so she would come to our house to watch one, watch TV. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So she would sneak, come to our house, watch TV, then go back. Yeah, when you see her here, it's through God's grace. I used to be fascinated by TV and everything, and inside I was like, maybe one day I'm going to be on the TV, you know? You used to sneak to their room to watch TV. Now they are watching you on their TV. <laughs> But my mother tells me that there is a pan which her father gave to yeah, her. Yeah, and we still it. use it up to date. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. So many memories. Oh, many memories. oh. Isn't there some pictures still that you can look? Oh, let's take. Oh, uh, uh, you got half photos of me. Half photos of Trudy. Oh my god. Oh, wow. This is me. Yeah. Oh my god. And Lynn and Rosetta. <gasps> Oh my god, and oh my, Arnold, <gasps> see guitar, this is guitar, yeah. wow, yeah. this is Jerry, wow, see Blair, you see how he was so tiny, I'm telling you, he used to cry all the time, this is him, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the TV? That's the yes. TV? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's neat to watch. That's the TV, that's yeah. so cool. Huh? But how was life growing up? You know, what made it difficult is the fact that my mom passed away when I was 16. So that is what made it difficult. But my, I have the best dad in the whole world. He did his best to, you know, give us an education. And he made so many sacrifices for us. Yeah. Was it not for my dad? I really don't know where we would be. How was life growing up without a mom? It was very difficult because as a girl, you need a mom to tell you stuff. You know, when you're becoming a woman, you're starting to grow. You know, when you're starting your periods, your body begins to change. You know, you don't have a mom to tell you, you know. You just learn from school, you know, and from friends. And some friends don't even have the right information because they are your age, you know. Mm. So you pick as you go, you know, so many embarrassing moments. At what point did you drop out of school? Um, it got to a point where there was just no enough money for fees. So I had to drop out. To summarize, I had one last sit down with Miss Trudy to talk about her YouTube journey. When I started content creation, I had to start with what I had. I had a very bad phone, oh my God. Infinix something, I think. I wouldn't let that stop me, you know. I try, I try, I just did what I could with what I had. So just use what you have, you know. Don't, don't, don't want a big camera that you can't afford and be like, when I get this expensive camera, I'll start. Then I'll start. When I get this, I'll just start with what you have and step by step, it's gonna take you there. So I kept improving my phone. What was the breakthrough point on YouTube? After being so depressed, I got a DM from a random guy and I, I check him out and he's, he's Maya, his name is Maya. And he's like, yo, I'm coming to Kenya. I saw you on YouTube, I'd like to link up and create content. And I'm like, uh, you know, well, by the time I responded, it was three months late, he had already left. So then he's like, okay, um, I'll be going to Ethiopia. Um, do you want to come? And I'm like, no, leave me alone, I'm depressed. I don't want to talk to anybody. You don't know me, I don't, you know, just leave mm. me alone. But then something told me, Trudy, just take the risk. What's the worst that could happen? You know, at this point, after doing promotions and all my life, I had saved about $400. Mm -hmm. And I decided to, you know, pay, you know, pay, pay the flight to Ethiopia. It was wow. about $250. I paid the $250. I was like, I'm going to survive on $150 somehow. In Ethiopia? Yes. So I went to Ethiopia. I met Wodemaya. It was amazing. And uh, best decision I've ever made in my life. Because I met Maya. He taught me how to work smart. 
course on YouTube, upload more content, how to put tags, how to be creative, how to be confident in my own skin. I didn't think I was good enough. I used to put crazy things in, in my tags. I actually used to put other content creators. Maya went through the tags, like, what's this? Who are these people? I'm like, other content creators. So that when people search them, yeah, you they come can't up. see me. So it's like, no, get this off. Believe in yourself, you know? And it changed my life. For the first time ever, I made a thousand dollars on YouTube. In one month? Yes. And that's the least, least I've ever made ever since that time. Where I was truly God sent, you know? 350,000 people that clicked subscribe to your channel. The lowest month that you ever made when you started making real money from YouTube was $1,000. You don't have to say an exact number, but about how much do you make each month just so people could be inspired? So it varies, you know, depends on, you know, the month, how it went. But uh, uh, $10,000, sometimes $8,000. Thank you so much, Miss Trudy. I hope people find you as inspiring as I do. Thank you. And thank you for everything you do for Africa. Yeah, I just want to say that no matter what, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Whatever you think of can be a reality if you put your mind and your hands to work. I'm just a girl who wants more in life. I just believe there's so much more to life than this.